In this demo, we'll be showing how to use FortiGate to protect a Kubernetes cluster using a north-south approach with full visibility on the pods. The demo is based on an on-premise cluster built with a Cube ADM, and therefore the concepts that we apply here can be extrapolated to any other Kubernetes cluster, even those based on public cloud. If we go into details, uh, we have a couple of uh, Kubernetes nodes, and then we want to add a Forti gate, which will be the default gateway in the network. In our example, this is a Forti gate VM, but uh, we could have a physical appliance and still get the same result. Then, for our demo, we have created a couple of pods, one on each node, and a Kubernetes has assigned a different IP belonging to the same CIDR, 192.168.00.16, and this is a virtual subnet which is different to the physical one where the nodes and FortiGate are connected to. Uh, the CNI that uh, we have chosen for our cluster is Calico, uh, primarily because it allows to disable NAT easily on the pods network, and also because it implements BGP that can be used by FortiGate to know how to route traffic back to each pod. Once uh, Calico enters into action, it will advertise uh, BGP prefixes corresponding to the pods that uh, Kubernetes has allocated to each node. And finally, uh, FortiGate will receive these uh, prefixes that will be used for properly routing the traffic that is going back to the, to the pods. All BGP advertisements are dynamic and updated automatically if new pods are created or destroyed. Thus, uh, the FortiGate keeps the routing updated at all times. Now, in the FortiGate, it can be observed that we have configured BGP neighbors, uh, one for each uh, Kubernetes node, and we are already receiving some uh, prefixes. This will be used by FortiGate uh, to direct uh, traffic properly to each pod by first uh, sending traffic to the corresponding node containing the pod. Also, this allows us to configure policies with a very fine grain and accurate control of the source address. In this case, we have two policies where each one is working on a different pod. We can see a quick demo where traffic from our two different pods is able to aggress the cluster and return properly. First, in our Kubernetes cluster, we are getting the available pods and then we'll open an internal shell for operating them. Uh, next, uh, we want to check the IP of the pods and ensure the policies are using a source address that matches the IP of the pod. The objects uh, that we are using as a source address are dynamic and uh, obtained through our FortiGate Kubernetes connector, but uh, we'll come to that later. Now, if we hover over the source address object of the first policy, we see that it matches the IP of the first pod. And if we do the same with the second policy, uh, we see that it matches the IP of the second pod. Uh, the next step is to run some simple ICMP traffic uh, going out of each pod. And we can see the effect of uh, disabling or enabling each policy individually. Once uh, the first policy is uh, disabled, uh, traffic is uh, stopped immediately on our first pod. And the same happens on our second pod if we disable the second policy. And of course, uh, the traffic is uh, restored again if we enable both policies. As mentioned before, uh, we can also introduce uh, FortiGate's Kubernetes connector. In the policies, uh, we were referencing the pod's IP with a named object. Uh, that is, we are not using any IP directly. Instead, FortiGate constantly retrieves and keeps updated the IPs that are used in the Kubernetes cluster. This way, we don't have to worry if a pod changes IP, because FortiGate will do that job for us. The Kubernetes connector can be configured under Security Fabric menu, and it only needs uh, some basic connection settings, uh, such as the Kubernetes API IP and port, plus a security token that can be configured in Kubernetes easily. And now, going back to the address objects, uh, again, you can see we have created a couple of them associated to our pods. 
and the creation and configuration of any of these objects is rather effortless. It is only required to give it a name, select the SDN connector to be used, in our case it's the Kubernetes connector, and finally in the filter it is just needed to indicate which objects will be retrieved from Kubernetes. And that concludes this video to protect an on-premise Kubernetes cluster using north-south approach with Calico and BGP. Thanks for watching.